So about three, three and a half centuries ago, you might remember we built this dwarf hamster enclosure. I always say we like you had some involvement. You just sat there and watched. Didn't even pick up a hammer. Didn't even hold a roll of tape for me. No wonder it's taken me so bloody long to finish. In the time it's taken me to put this together, it's become a bloody relic. But good news, because today we're finally making a start on the interior of the enclosure. Before we get to that though, I want to show you something, because I have installed, much like I have done with uh, all of my previous cages since 2017, I think, lights. But, but, okay, these lights are better than the previous lights I've installed on other enclosures, because these ones have colours. I don't know why it's never occurred to me in the past to use Elizabeth. Hello. <laughs> she screamed at me and left. Fine. I don't know why it's never occurred to me in the past to use colored lights for my hamster enclosures. I keep sticking with the boring white lights. And like, yeah, okay, that's more practical when it comes to filming, sure. I mean, just look how much it changes the scenery just to have that, just that white light. It's fantastic. But the red light, I have too many lights on this room. The battery may have gone. Um, looking at the camera's LCD screen, this does not look even close to as cool as it looks in real life. In fact, the camera makes it look pretty naff. So I guess my point is that the white light, fantastic for filming, taking photographs, and just being able to see in your enclosure when you're cleaning it out or whatever. Uh, but the red light, the blue light, that's green, that's blue, that green light, you can't appreciate any of the others. So I guess it sucks to be you. <laughs> I, I thought that was gonna look so much better on camera than it did. I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> RGB gamer hamster. Another piece of high-tech gadgetry that I've installed. Pipe cleaner. Hook. Stands up on its own. Some people have called me the greatest innovator of the 21st century. So now I can both see inside the enclosure and have the lid open without me having to exert any effort at all. Real talk though, if you do get LED lights for your hamster enclosure, which I highly recommend doing because it does take this very large piece of furniture from being just a big cage in the middle of your home, to being something that actually looks nice. It looks more like a display piece. Just make sure you get one with a dimmable setting. I think most of them come with dimmable settings now, whether they're coloured or not. Whoa, that's messing with the frames in my camera. It's, 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 it's. This is nice to look at, but when your hamster's awake and toddling around, they're not going to appreciate it being a full brightness. So keep it down low when they're out and about, put it up high when they're fast asleep and you just want to appreciate the enclosure or just don't get lights at all because, I mean, you don't actually need them. Anyway, back to the point of this video, we're making a start on the interior of this enclosure and I know we are thinking, you just received a huge, huge amount of Night Angel products, why don't you just fill it up with those? Because you could. I absolutely could. They definitely sent me enough that I could fill the entire enclosure and then some. And I thought about doing that, but I realized it wouldn't really feel like one of my enclosures, like one of my setups, if there wasn't at least a little bit of DIY in there. Just a little bit. So I took my original plans, my original designs for the fully DIY'd interior, and I tweaked it a little bit, haven't completely finished it, but I tweaked it a little bit to incorporate some of the Night Angel products into that design. So I'm gonna make a start on the plans I've designed so far, and then just kind of figure things out from there, I guess. It's not gonna be completed in this one video. I had considered waiting until the whole thing was done and just posting it as one long video, but a lot of you guys have said that you prefer me to post more often, um, and the only way I can really do that in big projects like this is by breaking it up into part ones, part twos, etc. So for building the interior furniture, which is mostly shelves, I'll be honest with you. I will mostly be using six millimeter thick plywood. I also have some four millimeter thick plywood, which I'll be using some of, but I don't particularly like it. It's a bit thin. Uh, the tear out on it is quite bad when you cut it with a jigsaw, so I won't use too much of that. First task is to sketch out all the pieces from my plants onto this piece of plywood and then cut them out with a jigsaw, do any little bit of sanding that's necessary. Can't do it right now though, because as you might be able to tell, it is the middle of the night and, um, I don't want my neighbors to hate me. So I'll be making a start on that tomorrow lunchtime, which will be in approximately three seconds for you guys. Two, 
Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out, so try not to hold me down, feel alive. So now we have a bunch of fun shaped wood pieces. I'm using the word fun far too liberally there. We've got rectangles, we've got wibbles, we've got wibbles with holes, wibbles without holes. We've got half rectangles, half wibbles, with and without holes. These are going to be serving as a type of safety shelving inside the enclosure. So naturally, there's going to be plenty of deep substrate in here. That is for the dwarf hamster to build the tunnels and the burrows and the systems and whatever else it wants to do down there. These will be sitting on top of that burrowing substrate. The shelves themselves won't be visible, they'll be covered by decorative substrates, but most importantly they'll be holding up all of the enrichment that sits on the surface of the burrowing substrate. You want to avoid placing your hamster's enrichment, especially heavy enrichment like ceramic toys or dig boxes, forage boxes, things like that. You want to avoid placing them directly on top of the burrowing substrate because all that's going to happen is your hamster's going to burrow underneath them, they're going to sink and possibly injure your hamster. Though that's the worst case scenario. The main issue is that all that enrichment is going to sink beneath the substrate and won't be usable by your hamster. Now, you can't just place the support shelves directly on top of the burrowing substrate because the exact same thing will happen. They'll sink into it uh, and that's a lot more dangerous than just individual toys coming down on your hamster. An entire shelf covered in heavy things. It's not a great situation. So your support shelves need some support stilts and that's what we have right here These are just made out of old scraps of wood. You don't have to use any good wood You don't even have to put any effort in. I literally just use scraps and offcuts from old projects Because uh, no one's ever gonna see them. These are gonna be completely buried and buried buried underneath the substrate Some people like to just use thick dowels of their stilts and attach them directly to the shelf and then place the shelf uh, straight into the enclosure. I like to have the legs separate from the shelves, that way I can lift the shelves off and go into the burrowing substrate if I ever need to. Now the only downside to stilts is because they are directly in the burrowing substrate, naturally they're going to interfere a little bit with the flow of your hamster's tunneling. So I like to try and use as few stilts as possible, that way I'm not interrupting the burrowing area so much. And to help me use as few of these as possible while still keeping a safe enclosure, I have these little wall supports and the shelves just sit directly on of those. They're each about a centimeter thick, so even if I cut the shelves slightly too narrow for the enclosure, there's no risk of them slipping off these supports. And there's a couple more down the other end of the enclosure. So if I just show you how this works, I've got my shelf here, we have the stilts, we have the back support, and there you go. Once the substrate's in, those legs will not be visible. This is nice and sturdy, can take a decent amount of weight. Also, on the underside, of this shelf. There are these two stoppers, again just made from little scraps that don't matter, and they go either side of the back support and they stop this shelf from being moved forward or backwards so it can't slip out of place. I think the risk of that happening is pretty low but it does give me peace of mind. Now this shelf with the little hole in it, this is gonna go in the back corner here. And that little hole is gonna give the dwarf easy access down into the burrowing section. But you might have noticed between the two shelves is a big gap and I don't want that staying there. So I need to make uh, a kind of wall to go along this bit. I wanna make a kind of faux rock wall to make this sort of look like a cliff edge. I have tons of mesh left over from when I made the lid for this enclosure. So I was thinking I can use the mesh to create the wobbly edging because it's really easy to bend this into the shape you want and then cover the mesh up with some homemade paper clay which i've made from gray egg box cartons and flower glue think that i'm addicted to this can't resist to be a little risky and go for it because i want you close i'm so exposed when you're keeping me wondering you know i do anything to be in your arms again so give me a sign Sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Just give me one more talking to you. Talking to you. Here we go again. Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here? I wanna go all in. So give me a sign. I 
could go for this, no more tricks. We could take things slow. Say you think about it too. When the lights go out and there's no doubt that I should be with, that I should be. We've been on and off again and again. I don't know which way we're going. No control. You push me, then you pull me back in. So here it is, paint dry, clay completely dry, looks alright. So now this is gonna go between these two shelves, and there we go, a little fake cliff edge. Quite happy with that, I have missed a small gap in the corner there, I'll find something to fill it, probably a dowel or something, but overall I'm pretty happy. So now I just need to glue the fake rock wall to that shelf so it doesn't move around and cause a safety issue. Now while that is drying, let's move on to the next section of shelving. So here I have the Night Angel Dwarf Hamster Chamber Hide. This comes with its own set of stilts which is very, very helpful. This is a nicely made chamber house. I've got nothing bad to say about it, but in this specific setup, in this enclosure, there is one issue and that's this huge gap left here. So my solution for that is to remove the original Night Angel lid and to replace it with my own custom made lid that is the exact width of the enclosure and it has stoppers on the other side so it doesn't shift out of place on top of the chamber hide. Just pop that in. Go. And easy as that, we've solved the issue of the big gap at the front and we still have the door on top. There's also the door on the front there, but that's going to be completely covered by substrate. And that's how it looks so far. So now I want to move over to the left side of the enclosure and show you my plans for over here. So I have this rectangular shelf with the little doorway in that drops down into the burrowing substrate. This shelf sits securely on those back supports and on that one stilt leg. Now my ideas for the shelf are mostly just a bit of fun. This is where I'm going to be building my dwarf hamster's main residential house. It's unlikely to be the house that they live in all the time, especially because it won't be built for that purpose. They're more likely to live underground or in the chamber hide. But when I was building Lemonade's enclosure, I gave her her own residential house. It's just a silly thing that adds a bit of character to the setup. So there's going to be a residential house and a little front garden as well. is a winding road no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights and i i really want to know really want to know if i let figure out I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So that's the basic walls of the house. I'm going to add a few extra bits of character to those later as well. It's a little bit chamber hidey, kind of. I'm really loving the way the dry brushing brought that texture out. It kind of looks like a little bit like cracked drying sand. It's very nice. Very pleasing. Now naturally this does need a roof. In fact, both of them need a roof. We need a little roof for here and we need a second roof 
for this main section, so uh, I guess those are the next bits to work on. Alright, now it's time for the main roof. I've already cut out the piece of wood that I'm going to need for it. And uh, that goes in just there. Ooh. So that's how it's going to be sitting when it's finished. Now again, with this roof, I have to take some safety precautions because I really don't want the dwarfy trying to climb up this. Fortunately, because this is a slanted roof and it's for a dwarf hamster, I think it's going to be pretty easy to make this climb proof. I'm going to be using dwarf hamster anatomy against itself because you see dwarf hamsters have something that the other domestic species of hamster don't have, and that is very hairy feet. More importantly, they have fur on the soles of their feet, which is one of the things that makes them a lot more clumsy in climbing when compared to Syrians and Chinese hamsters, which don't have fur on the bottom of their feet. All I need to do to make something climb-proof for a dwarf hamster is have it on an angle and give it a slippery surface. So here I have a piece of plastic perspex that I've cut to the exact same size and shape as the roof, and when the roof's design is finished, I will place this on top of it. That will cover up all of the texture and all of the traction, which means the hairy little dwarf feet shouldn't be able to climb up it. There's always the possibility that an individual hamster might figure out how to bypass safety features, but this is what I'm going to try out first, and if I need to adjust things later, I will. There's the main roof, with that nice, rusted, corrugated iron aesthetic. To make sure it stays in place on top of the house, I have a crudely made bracket. This is some triangular scraps of wood and jumbo lolly sticks. On the back side of the roof, more lolly sticks attached with a hinge. There's a small gap between the lolly stick and the wall of the enclosure, and this hinged piece slides right in there. And the moss roof slides into place like that. I'm hopeful, possibly naively so, that I've made this just about tall enough that the dwarf won't try and climb on top of the moss roof, but because I know how unpredictable hamsters can be, I included a safety barrier so there's no accidental slipping off the edge of there if it does climb up. The next little detail I want to add are these tiny brick walls made from tiny Jenga blocks painted with various shades of brown and I'm just going to glue those directly onto the shelf. And to give it a finishing touch I added some dry moss to the front. The final thing I want to add before wrapping up this episode is this dig box. It's made from plywood and perspex and I've sealed the inside with silicon so it can be filled up with whatever substrate and I don't have to worry about it seeping through the gaps. I'm using this Night Angel Underground peep box as one of the supports, and then at the back, just two regular stilts. Oh, 
And this is where I'm going to end part one because I'm very tired. Danny is going to be home any minute and I really just want to spend some time with him. And also I think this video is probably quite long by this point. Apologies if it is too long, unless you like long videos, in which case you're welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.